word I got out, what word y'all did say I got out, what I don't. I just don't know how to act. We give God the beginning of our day instead of just giving God the leftovers that we have at the end of the night. Week one was absolutely incredible, nor was I willing to step into it even when I did see it. I was like, God, you want me to do what? No. Y'all, stop. Ooh, 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 ooh. These really be good when I read them back. Maybe the enemy keeps using that man to keep you stuck because every time he goes searching for you, you're still in that same toxic relationship. See, I just began to preach it. My Lord. So then why am I asking God for the same thing on Tuesday that I just asked for him on Monday? If I really had faith, wouldn't I be thanking God on Tuesday? Would the church say amen? Okay. Daniel's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Daniel said, don't play about me and my God, baby. I'm still here. He didn't say that. That is all five days, all five prayer points of the first week of LTG. Hey, friends. I got a word, I got a word, I got a word for y'all to say. I got a word. I don't. I don't. I don't. I just don't know how to act. Um, hey friends, <laughs> I don't got a word for y'all today. I'm actually talking about LTG today, which is why I'm in my bedroom when you're used to me being in the car. If you have yet to participate in LTG, then you've never seen this background before, which is crazy because LTG is free right now. Like, what are you, what are you doing? For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, LTG is the newest program that I launched in my private community that just opened up to the public this week. So it is completely free to all women until April 28th. Um, LTG is Letters to God, which essentially is a 6.30 a.m. Zoom call where I provide the space and I host the opportunity for like-minded women to come together in the morning, wake up together, start their day together, check in with one another and prioritize prayer in the morning. This is a 15 to 20 minute live Zoom where you can keep the camera on, you can keep the camera off, that's totally your business. All mics are muted except for mine. We utilize the chat to go back and forth and just check in with each other as soon as we get on there. How's your heart posture? What's your spirit feeling like? Are you feeling high? Are you feeling low? Got any prayer requests? Then I give a prayer point. Um, the prayer points really are just whatever's on my heart at the moment or whatever the Holy Spirit be in the mood to flow through me, <laughs> or whatever I talked to God about the night before. So these are just random prayer points that ladies can use, but they totally do not have to. After I give my prayer point, I set the timer and we all go into our private prayer time as individuals. So the call is not me praying over all the women. It's the women going to God for themselves, right? It's me providing a safe space for all of us to start our mornings together, start our mornings on the right foot and give God the beginning of our day instead of just giving God the leftovers that we have at the end of the night. Oof. Week one was absolutely incredible. Like truly the feedback from LTG so far has been definitely way bigger and way different than I even expected it to be or could have even imagined that it was going to be. It has been so powerful so far. Um, God's really doing his big one in there. So if you have not joined yet, you can click the link in any of my bios and uh, register for that. It's completely free. It doesn't even ask you for a card. Um, it's completely free to the public until April 28th. So in this video, I wanted to talk about all the different prayer points that we went over for week one. Let's run it. So day one, which was last Monday, the prayer point, it was in the form of a question. Most of them are because God speaks to me a lot through questions. I don't know if God talks to everybody like that or not, or if I'm just an oddball. I don't know. But God speaks to me a lot through questions where he'll ask me a question to guide me to the answer, right? So that's that's usually the prayer points that I share with the, the ladies and the crew. So Monday prayer point was, are you trying to escape or are you trying to endure? This stemmed from the thought that a lot of us go to God for an escape instead of going to God to ask him to give us endurance to handle whatever season he has us in, right? So a lot of us were going to God and we're like, God, please get me out of this season. God, please get me out of this space. God, please get me out of this mindset. God, please get me out, get me out, get me out. And we're asking him for an escape instead of asking him, God, if you need me to be here, just give me the strength to make it through this. Give me the strength to endure this season that you have me in so that I can develop here because he's not going to put you in a season he's not going to develop you in. I'm not even about to preach, but 
instead of asking God to keep us in the season that he has us in and be okay with that and ask him for the endurance to overcome all the obstacles that you encounter during that season instead we're always asking him for an escape i did give the example of daniel and the lion's den for this one if you've never read daniel and the lion's den it is so good like i don't know if i'm crazy or what but daniel and the lion's den was so good there was so much revelation in that for me um that's daniel 6 by the way for those that have never read it i, I really do encourage y'all to go read that for yourselves because it's really good but um so basically what had happened was there was a bunch of men that was out to get Daniel, right? So they went to the king and they were like, oh, we should make up this law. And they convinced the king to form this law that required Daniel to stop praying or he would be thrown into the lion's den. It required everybody to stop praying. But for the sake of the story, we're talking about Daniel. It required Daniel to stop praying to Jesus or he would be thrown into the lion's den. And he did not stop, right? He was like, forget what y'all talking about. But me and my household, we're going to go to the Lord. Amen. Let the church say amen. Okay. So then Daniel got thrown into the lion's den, right? And the king was like, okay, well, if your God is real, then God will save you, right? So he threw him in there. The next morning, the king went running to the den and was like, oh my gosh, Daniel, did God save you? Like, are you still there? And Daniel's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Daniel said, don't play about me and my God, baby. I'm still here. He didn't say that. What he really said was, yes, I'm here. He said that the Lord sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth for him, which is how he survived the lion's den. Jesus did not remove Daniel from the den. Jesus just sent an angel to close the mouth of the lion so that Daniel would not die in the den. Ooh, that's a word. Don't miss it. Don't miss that. <laughs> Uh, so many of us sit around praying for God to take us out of the storm, baby. Sometimes we got to pray for an umbrella. Sometimes we just got to pray for a shelter to make it through the storm because God's not going to put us in a storm. He's not going to develop us in. That was prayer point number one. Let's move on. So moving on to Tuesday, uh, Tuesday's prayer point was, what are you carrying that was actually sins of your parents? Now, this one shook me, to be honest, and this wasn't really one that I was trying to get women to understand something necessarily. It was just something that had come up in my prayer time. It was from like a podcast episode that I saw um, where they were talking about Exodus 20. It's Exodus 20 verse 5. Um, and I really, it was kind of more of like an open dialogue type of thing. Like, I've never read this verse before and this really shook me. And it made me think about like, what are we blaming ourselves for that was actually passed down to us? Ooh, I'm not about to preach on that. Go read it though. Exodus 20 verse 5. That one was really good. I really enjoyed Tuesday's conversation between the ladies and myself. Um, but moving on, Wednesday. Wednesday was my birthday. Hey, your girl's 31. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Um, Wednesday's prayer point was, what plans are you holding on to that could be hindering you from seeing the plan God has for you? Now that one was real personal, I ain't even gonna lie, because I was so stuck on this plan that I had made for my life so much that I was missing the plan that God had for me. I was so sure that I knew what I wanted and what I needed. I'm like, I know that that's gonna give me a good life. I know that that is exactly what I want and that is what is gonna make me happy. And because I really felt like I knew myself better than God knew me, I stuck to the plan that I had made for my life so much that I couldn't even see the plan that God had for me. Nor was I willing to step into it even when I did see it. I was like, God, you want me to do what? No, y'all, stop. Never in my life did I see myself on any platform in front of any camera talking about God. Like, I never saw this to be my life, but I've also never felt more myself in my entire life. Like, had I stuck to the plan that I had set out for myself, I would not be where I'm at today, which is exactly where God needs me, but it's also where my heart desires to be. Like, I'm so happy and comfortable and full of joy here doing this, and I never would have been, I never would have made it here had I stuck so much to the plan that I had set out for myself when I thought that I knew me. Jesus. Moving on. Um, day four, which was Thursday, was what if the enemy keeps attacking you the exact same way? Because when he goes looking for you, you're always right where he left you. Ooh. <laughs> These really be good when I read them back. I mean, they be good in the moment, but I'm one of those people that be just talking and, and it always is like deep stuff, but I don't realize, like I don't always recognize how deep it really is because I live in the basement. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm always thinking deep. My first thought is always a deep thought. And so oftentimes I don't realize how deep of the topics that I'm discussing um, until I run it back or until somebody repeats me and I'm like, 
whoa really like it hits me then anyway um what if the enemy keeps attacking you the exact same way because when he goes looking for you you're always right where he left you um this was the reference from the verse where it talks about how the enemy is is roaming around like a roaring lion looking for you like he's looking for somebody to devour um and it made me think like maybe the enemy was using the exact same attack on me over and over and over and over because every single time he looked for me, he, he was roaming around looking for me. I was in the exact same space that he left me last time. He didn't even have to look hard for me. He just went and knocked on the same door and boom, there I was. Maybe the enemy keeps using that man to keep you stuck because every time he goes searching for you, you're still in that same toxic relationship. See, I just began to preach in, oh, my Lord. Now with this topic, I was not just talking about physical, right? Like I wasn't like, oh, you're in the same house, you're in the same career, you're in the same, although that too, I really was thinking mental with it. Like you're in the same mindset, and that's why he can attack you in the same way that he did last time. You have the same insecurities. You're in the same heart posture. You're in the same routine. You're in the same relationship. You're in the same struggles. Like, you're still there. You're still upset about that one thing that happened 10 years ago. You're still struggling with forgiveness. You're still struggling with self-discovery. Like, you're still in the same place he left you last time, which is why he can still attack you in the same way. Now on this one, I definitely made it more personal to give context because it's a safe space there, right? Um, and so I did open up about how I really feel like the enemy really has to use different tactics on me nowadays. He cannot hit me with the same attacks that he've always, he's always hit me with. He can. They don't break me anymore. They might make me stumble like a little, oof, got me. That's a good one. But he can't break me with the same attacks that he used to and the same tactics that he used to because I'm not in that space anymore. I don't have the same mindset. So when he goes to throw the same attacks at me, it don't hit me the way that it used to. I'm like, child, anyways, let me move along. <laughs> the enemy be really having to fight me nowadays to get me. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right, and then moving on to the final day, which was day five, it was faith is not begging. So this one wasn't in the form of a question. It was just a random thought, I guess, or what God had put on my heart. Faith is not begging. This stemmed from the thought that I used to pray the same prayer all the time and call that faith right? And a lot of us do that. We're constantly putting out the same prayer over and over and over and over. And then we're like, yeah, I'm standing in faith on this one subject. Are you? I would constantly pray for the same thing all the time. Every prayer would be exactly the same. And I would say, oh yeah, I'm standing in faith and I'm believing God for this. But if I was believing God for that, then why would I be begging for that? If I prayed a prayer on Monday, why wouldn't I just believe that God was going to do it for me? If it was in God's will, it will be done. So then why am I asking God for the same thing on Tuesday that I just asked for him on Monday? If I really had faith, wouldn't I be thanking God on Tuesday instead of asking for the same thing? Oof. Anyway, this day I also opened up about the fact that I believed and I had faith that he could do it, but I didn't necessarily believe that he would do it for me. And that's where that question kept coming about. Like, yes, I had faith. I had faith that God could do all things. I just didn't believe that God would do all things for me. Like, who am I to deserve that? Who am I that, that he should, you know, save me? Who am I that he should give me these things? Who am I that he should give me my heart's desires? Like, why do I deserve any of this? And so I had enough faith to believe that he could. I did not have enough faith to believe that he would for me. And that's it. That is all five days, all five prayer points of the first week of LTG. Week one was with my private community and then week two, which we're in now, it opened up to the public. So it's completely free for all ladies that are interested in joining until April 28th. So we have a week and some change left of the free to the public. So if you are not in LTG yet, but you're interested in joining, you can click the link in any of my social media bios and the first box that pops up, it'll literally say, get the link for LTG. You just type in your name and your email. It doesn't even ask you for a card and it sends you the information. So in the email that you get, it'll send you the actual Zoom link. So you'll just click that Zoom link in the morning to, to hop onto the actual call. And it'll also send you like a breakdown of how the calls work, how the calls operate. So you can have that in writing if you want it. And that's all. That's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm sure I'll be posting a video with a rundown of week two. Bye, friend.